G'day everyone, welcome back, Grandma's Handbag. Thank you so much for joining us. New subscribers, thank you for jumping on in and uh, old time regulars. Glad you could join the handbag again. We got a uh, thread response for box sets at the moment. Um, so we'll see what we can do there. I'm trying to keep things uh, cultured and classy with Julian Grimm, some late night classical guitar and the old whiskey on the rocks. This is just uh, Johnny Walker uh, Black, I think it is. It's out of the tumbler. Put on a big uh, rock of ice and away you go. Away indeed. Anyway, hopefully I won't uh, chew up too much time. CD box sets first, vinyl box sets after. I will try not to rabbit too much. Um, Pink Floyd, is there anybody out there? The Wall Live, um, it's a two CD set, but very nicely packaged, kind of as you'd expect from Pink Floyd. Um, good live document of the um, uh, the Wall 8081. Uh, Pink Floyd box set, let's go for another one. Uh, Dark Side Immersion set, probably showed this last year, picked it up um, at around about half the Discogs price. <laughs> How many copies of Dark Side do you need? Well, I'm not going to answer that because I jumped in with probably my fourth or fifth copy with this. But, um, yeah, very interesting. It's still got the marbles. It's still got the um, uh, drink coast. <laughs> it's bonkers kind of set. Ah, uh, look, I'll open it up again. It's, it's ridiculous, really, but, um, you know. Scarves, CDs, posters. Uh, yeah, it's got it all. <laughs> marbles crazy uh anyway so that is uh dark side cd set what else we got all right this uh oh, why not some more floyd then um the early years 1971 reverberation so this is the uh, metal stuff um look these are a good little set i have to say i just haven't been very um uh solid in uh, like rigorous in picking them up um but i think probably for any uh, big fan essential stuff in getting those um not so much outtakes as bits of live things and um yeah some very good paraphernalia music video wise um here we go three from the frontline reggae um off the uh frontline virgin uh reggae label so you got Uroy with Dread and a Babylon, Culture with uh, Too Long in Slavery, and Gladiators with Dreadlocks, The Time Is Now. Pretty simple set. I think I picked that up for uh, five bucks years ago, but a good simple reggae primer for a label you don't hear about all that often. Now this, this doesn't look like a lot, but this was probably one of the most... Um, formative uh, boxes I could have picked up. Rough Trade Shops, 25 years. Uh, 2001 this came out and it kicks off with the Buzzcocks boredom. It goes all over the shop. Um, anything that was sold through or distributed by Rough Trade uh, label or shops turns up on here. Just an incredible um, uh, box set for anything outside of the mainstream post-punk alternative um just really really essential stuff sorry i've been holding that up wrong worth worth uh tracking down or buying if ever you see it um really can't recommend back to the floyd um sid barrett crazy diamond three cd set just about everything you're going to need with um sid barrett on there his two albums a third opal plenty of outtakes um, pretty much scrapes the barrel clean, that one, but a good one nonetheless. Um, REM Up. I know that looks pretty ragged. Um, I think I bought this close to when it came out. Up was the album that got me into REM. Um, I haven't looked at this in donkey's years, to be honest. It's got a nice little uh, booklet in there, cardboard and that. Um... But yeah, look, I've got a, a soft spot for Up. Maybe not their best album by any means, but um, yeah, look. Still find it hard to part with this one. Um, although the packaging's uh, on its way out, that's for sure. All right, I've shown this in my top 100. Robert Johnson, a complete recording. It's just a two CD set. But what it's all about for me is that uh, booklet in there. Um, just 
gold, gold in terms of describing and then uh, almost uh, transcribing the lyrics, explaining them. Um, absolutely important seminal uh, stuff for me. All right, a few favourites on here. Velvet Underground, Peel Slowly and See, absolutely essential box set. Uh, and I knew this was going to be essential. I got this as a uh, 21st present. Whoops. <laughs> the banana's fallen out, so I've still kept the banana. Just lost its stickiness. They all do, don't they? Um, and I got a little inscription there. I asked my um, aunt and uncle to who gave me this as a uh, 21st birthday. And as they said... On the occasion of his 21st birthday, much love and best wishes from Martin and Wendy. So, my aunt and uncle um, were happily guided to this, I think. And, um, yeah, look, what can I say? Five CDs, like I said, absolutely formative um, listening for me, Velvet Underground. Most, you know, there's the majority of outtakes and things you want to see in a kind of a chronological um, sense in there. All those five albums, uh, well, four albums and the uh, original demos on the back. All right, um, this one was from my beautiful wife not long after we met. And, you know, I, I, I pity uh, my family and, and partner if they ever choose music for such a, a snob and probably an unwelcome person as me. But she picked up uh, the Gonzo Tapes, the life and work of uh, Hunter S. Thompson. Fascinating document. Um, really, really backs up his um, uh, books so well as well. Because a lot of these tapes, for example, you're hearing almost verbatim the uh, proceedings that are going on on um, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas when he gets his Gonzo style on uh, down in writing, which is basically transcribing these tapes here. Um so you've got, yeah, Hell's Angels, you've got him in the 60s there, Fear and Loathing in 71, more Fear and Loathing, um, Fear and Loathing in Saigon, fascinating stuff, just a really, really interesting uh, uh, box, obviously almost no music on there whatsoever, but um, yeah, when I get that on it still blows my mind uh, historically, just how across uh, the 70s Hunter was. Um, all right, and for probably the most um, influential box set for me, um, Nuggets, the four CD set from 1998. I remember buying this once I realised that it, it was coming out. It cost me in 1998, I think, $110, and that was with a staff discount. Um, absolutely, yeah, formative listening on there. Well over 100 tracks. Uh, of garage greatness, just insane stuff. Um, great booklet as well, with write-ups on on every track in there. You know, look, eighty-four, uh, maybe a ninety-six-page booklet. I think that is, but beautiful, beautiful book uh, and and uh, set. All right, vinyl, vinyl time. Okay, I just saw Alan Static Traveler go through. I think he said it was 35 um, classical sets. I won't bore you with that. I've only really got two or three. And the ones that are worth showing. A um, couple of Deutsche Grammophon uh, Wagner. One day I'll get to, to these. I, I think this is my dotage listening when I get to uh, retire. Whenever that might be. Almost feels like we're in it now a little bit. Loving the time that the uh, virus has afforded me. All right, uh, Beethoven Symphonies 1 to 9. Uh, again, Deutsche Grammophon. 8LP box on that one. Just, look, I think I picked this up for 3 or $4, and how, how could you not uh, jump in there with that? Um, Gramophone is generally something you're going to look for, I'm assuming, with that. This is a weird one. Picked up the other day. I um, ended up being partly incomplete. But what it is called is Cooking with George Part 2. Uh, and that is actually an old, uh, what, what I assume it's an old um, film reel canister. It's supposed to be a 6 LP or 6, sorry, 6 EP set with 12 bands on it um, from 1984. Um, and... It's basically uh, from our national youth broadcaster, Triple J. 
these are all beautiful con condition like I said one missing uh, bands of the 12 bands on there I can truthfully say I'd only heard of one um, that made anything much greater of their time um, but just fascinating uh, to have it in that box there which is made by the Australian Real Co um, for 1984-85 yeah anyway um, what next? What next? Alright. Let's go with this. Top 100 um, Mogwai Come On Die Young 4LP Deluxe set on that. Just beautifully pressed and done. Um, not a lot else uh, to go on with it, I think. Um, yep. There's a bit of a booklet in there, but there's not much else to show on that guy. Um... This one I haven't shown whatsoever, and uh, I feel a bit guilty on that. I've, I just saw, I think, uh, Fred Big Star 1000 show the CD copy. I stumped up a year or so ago, and I'm still not up to showing it yet. But I will come back to it. Kankyo Ongaku, which is um, Japanese ambient environmental and new age music from 1980 to 1990. Beautiful, light in the attic, light in the attic package. Um, nice booklet. Very nicely designed in in uh, the theme with the rest of the uh the box there lovely pressings i think rti heavy card sleeves the artwork sort of uh goes on with it and matches them and the music um well look i'll save the music describing the music for another time but you know generally various shades of sublime um really really lovely stuff this is a combined vinyl CD box. I think there's five. There you go. One, two, three, four, five CDs. And there's a vinyl record that uh, sits in here. So Love Forever Changes. There you go. Um, some other bits and pieces and a nice booklet in there. Just diving deeper on the album as well. Lovely box set. <coughs> Excuse me, I think Grandma's time for another uh, swig of whiskey. Sorry, sip, sip of whiskey. Um, let's go with this guy. I think I showed this a year or so ago. Um, Kinks Village Green 50th anniversary set, and I was able to pick this up for a ridiculous price of uh, forty dollars. Plenty, plenty of. CDs in there, um, you got LP versions, at least two versions in there as well, and the booklet is just, well, booklets are just fabulous, oh, it's already uh, shedding some CDs out of there, so you got this beautiful uh, in pictures and words book, just showing everything around that time, um, Wonderful stuff, great insight, and then all the paraphernalia that turns up in here. So you've got all these uh, folders and the likes that have just got posters or everything you could uh, want and name turns up in there. Um, all right, Smashing Pumpkins, Melancholy, four LP set, um, 2012 reissue. Just a beautiful uh, album, and they, yeah, they did it right. Did it right with this one. Um, two booklets, which is quite interesting, but quite well done. So I think this booklet actually didn't come with Australian copies. Um, we got the uh, lyrics, but not quite like this, in the even in the CD versions. So you've got the original one there, and then you've got... Um, a lot of the uh, details, info on there. Um, as lovely as that book is, it it, it gets a bit self-mythologising of um, of Corgan, really telling the victor's narrative of the band's story. Um, that that I found a little hard to take. Never mind that. Um, Otis Redding, uh, seven LP Definitive Studio album collection. Um, this is a mono box set. 
I got this for a pretty decent price, under 10 US or 10 Australian dollars, a uh, album, and um, beautiful sound for what it is. I think there's mastering by uh, Chris Bellman, um, pressing in the Netherlands, just great bang for buck. The only uh, downside is uh, the covers aren't thick like maybe the original US would have been, but outside of that. Um, small thing to complain about really um likewise another decent cheap one beef heart sun zoom spark um 70 to 72 so you've got three albums released there uh decals spotlight kid um clear spot and then you've got a fourth thing of outtakes mr dylan so i haven't shown this before either um, volume 15 bootleg series traveling through time so uh, Nashville skyline uh, John Wesley Harding outtakes and some extra stuff with uh, Johnny Cash um, and Earl Scruggs as well um, just started listening through this and some really lovely stuff as well um, a very contented sounding Dylan in the second half which is not all that common but um, very nice Contented in a very different way. Um, Bob Dylan, Trouble No More. So this is uh, number 13 in the bootleg series. That's a 4 LP set. Um, nice booklet on this. And the booklet, really welcome on this one as well. Very, very good uh, stories about track by track. And a couple of great essays in there. Um, just an area of Dylan's career that I'd kind of um, avoided for a long time and still haven't been completely sold on it. But the uh, kind of the fervor that he brings the live versions on here is um, much more interesting to me than uh, the solo uh, versions I've had. I mean, Slow Train Coming, I do love um, uh, the studio version, but this one here has got some really good stuff. You know, love him or hate him, he's a bloody good performer, Mr. Dylan. Um, this one picked up just before Christmas. Again, another one I just, just have not even had a chance to uh, dive in and listen to yet. Uh, Basement Tapes Raw. So this is, a, I think, three LPs and a book again. Um, volume 11 of the Bootleg series, but... It's just important, really, really important in terms of it being this repository of 20th century American song. Um, I would have loved the six CD version of it as well, but look, this came up um, at a very cheap price for me, you know, 30 odd US dollars for the set, and uh, that was too bloody hard. Too hard to say no, just, just too hard. Um, I am piling up with box sets around here. Now, you guys might know this one. Oh, it's a bit heavier. Um, I have resolved to crack this. I still haven't yet. Again, 35 Australian dollars, so under 25 US. Insane price um, for this. Not my favourite era of Bowie. Um, that belongs to this one here. Um, and these are lovely, lovely sets. Really heavy. You know, we're talking five to six kilos uh, each. At this point, you get all those albums there. You got your low, your um, state, uh, actually not station to station. Scary Monsters, Lodger, uh, Heroes on there. There's bonus bits and bobs. A great, great booklet. Um, again, it does make it a really worthwhile set to have. I think um, just some really, really good bits of, you know paraphernalia again I'll say some essays interviews and the like as well so very very um, worthwhile set one of my faves to own that's for sure it's piling up around here like the tritus not too many left guys um, Velvet Underground complete matrix tape so 8 LP set of um, two nights um, four sets uh, eight LPs of Velvet Underground at the Matrix on the, uh, I think it was the 26th and 27th of November 69. Love, love the Velvets live in that intimate setting, which is his, um, 
38 minutes of uh, Sister A on one one LP on two sides. Um, outside of that, the production quality of the rest of the uh, box set is pretty ordinary. This is the limit of the booklet. Fairly uh, flimsy in that for what it's worth, but I suppose on the positives, what can I say? It makes you focus on the music. Um, and that stuff pretty much speaks for itself. Uh, Velvet Underground Verve MGM albums. So this is a uh, set. I think I also spoke at length on this. Uh, everything's in mono here. These are mono except for the 1969 comp. Um, awful pressing quality. Um, pretty flimsy on the box. Uh, I don't think there's even a booklet. No, not even a booklet on this one. You just get, I think this is about the limit of it. Banana. Um, a poster. And then there's a second poster with some, um, some words. Admittedly pretty decent words by David Frick or Fricky. Fricker. Um, from, um... I think it used to be Rolling Stone. Anyway, um, there is a 2019 version of this where it's been done properly, pressed properly, not at um, United or Rainbow, but RTI in the Netherlands. Mastered, again, by Chris Bellman, I think. Um, not like this one here, so look out for that. Not this 2012 version. All right, two more. Um, two of my favourites. And, oh, all right, so what we have here is Harmonia. Harmonia's works box um, from 2000 or 2015 or 16, I think. Really doesn't give a lot away. Um, but what is inside is quite lovely. Um, so if I just struggle away with these, bear with me for a second. So you got... Music Von Harmonia. Um, you've got uh, Tracks and Traces, 76. Harmonia Deluxe on there. Documents, 1975. And Harmonia Live, 1974. Um, lovely pressings. Well, very well done on the um, uh, details with the pressing. You get a poster in there as well. Really, really nice um, booklet. Very sort of casual and intimate photos of, of uh, their studio in Forst in Germany. Um, beautiful stuff. A real time capsule the mid 70s. And about the best thing about this box set. What, what do they call these things? Diorama? A diorama of uh, where it uh, all went down in there studio in the forest so love that um fantastic box set and to kick it off the last one is the first box set that i ever owned and that started it off for me uh nick drake fruit tree complete uh recorded works i'll be showing this on my channel to the day i die probably that is the correct price on there so two bucks um the day i felt fated for this one to come into my hands and and this is just absolutely treasured piece um ex uh, radio library from our national broadcaster so it's got these little abc head office uh things on there um and there is as well as the unique artworks they use on these there is a lovely uh book uh with all the lyrics and and things on there absolutely treasured piece for me um and really glad I could once again uh, show it. <laughs> so. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, I won't chew any more of your ear off now. Let me know if you guys have uh, come across any of these, any that you've got or any that you uh, want. I'm happy to give you more info in the comments or whatever. Um, otherwise, take care. Uh, I'm going to sit back, flip this record and put all this stuff away now. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.